Today I want to talk about $500 SEO. Now that $500, it could be $400, it could be $300. I want to talk about the three types of service providers that sell $500 a month SEO and which are safe and which you should avoid. I want to talk about why people think that SEO should cost $500 and the practical reasons why you're unlikely to get good SEO for $500 or less. I'm also going to go into what it takes to run a SEO agency or even just being a SEO freelancer, some of the costs and, and why uh, charging people $500, $400, $300 a month is really unsustainable. And then we're going to talk a, a little bit about why people find it hard to break out of this mental model of thinking that $500 is the most that they should pay for any form of digital marketing and the types of organizations that happily pay up to 10 times that amount or 100 times that amount. So let's get into it. A $500 SEO. The reason why I'm bringing this up, this has been kind of bubbling up in me for a while. I wanted to talk about it. I see a lot of my friends that are running small agencies or they're freelancers and a lot of people that were traditionally building websites are branching out into SEO. That's one characteristic of it. A lot of people that are younger, say they're under 30 years old, are looking at digital marketing as a way to help people and to, to make money for themselves. There's a lot of SEO software out there. There's do-it-yourself SEO courses. Uh, there's a, about a zillion blog posts on SEO. So with all this information, I think that there's a lot of people doing SEO that didn't do SEO in the past. But I want to talk about the, the types of businesses that I run into the most. The types of businesses that I, I run into are usually family-based. There's some sort of family dynamic. There are smaller businesses. They're under $50 million in revenue. $50 million in annual revenue for these businesses is a big step. Now, some of these are doing two hundred and fifty grand a year in revenue. Some of them are doing a million. Some of them are doing two million or three or four or five million. And the infrastructure of their organization has not grown to the point where they have internal marketing teams. They might have five or 10 or 20 employees, but they don't have an internal marketing team. And so a lot of them are exploring different things that they can do with digital marketing. Some of that is social media, some of it might be AdWords, and some of it might be SEO. So what I found is there are some organizations that are very open to spending an appropriate amount on SEO, and then there are some organizations that have a real hard time imagining that SEO or social media or any type of digital marketing could cost a thousand dollars a month much less two thousand or five thousand that's just too much money in their mind so what these organizations are looking for is someone who can do SEO for five hundred or less you know two hundred three hundred four hundred or five hundred dollars a month and there's three types of these providers that I've identified before we go into the three types, I want to clarify really quickly. For 500 or less, for an American-based consultant, freelancer, or SEO agency, these organizations are generally going to be a one or two person team with outsourced help or one person by themselves, generally speaking. Larger agencies, 10, 12, 20, 25, 50 people, they simply cannot compete at a price point of $500. And we're going to go into the, the cost model a little bit later, but let's talk about the three types 
of providers at this price point. The first one is what I call the up-and-comer. The up-and-comer is probably less than 5% of all the providers selling SEO at $500 a month or less. Now, generally speaking, this is a person that maybe they've been building websites and they're branching out into SEO and they're trying to get practice. They're trying to get their confidence and learn how it really works. It could be a younger person like I talked about before, you know, in their 20s. Maybe they're out of college. They're trying to learn digital marketing. Maybe they interned somewhere at an agency and they're going out on their own. These up-and-comers, the diamonds in the rough, as I like to call them, they're going to practice SEO in what we call the white hat way. They're going to follow the rules that Google has laid out. But at that $500 price point, they're not going to be able to do a whole lot and stay profitable. These are the type of people that you should seek out. And, but again, this is going to be by far the smallest percentage of people in this category selling SEO or digital marketing services at this price point. For the most part, what I see people doing at this price point is they might be taking your existing content, optimizing it, making sure that you have correct keywords. They might be giving you uh, keyword research. They might be telling you what type of content you need to be creating. But they're probably not going to be creating content on their own for your site. They're not going to be redesigning your site. They're probably not going to be doing uh, a whole ton of web development. They might do a, a little bit, but they might not be doing a whole ton. They might optimize some of your other profiles out there like your Google My Business or your Yelp. I want to say this really quick too. The people that are doing white hat SEO, they're up and comers, they're diamonds in the rough, they're, they're doing a good job. Uh, these sorts of people generally raise their prices after getting a little bit of practice underneath their belt. They're not going to stay at that $500 price point for very long because they do bring value in what they do. A lot of people that are doing SEO for three, four, or five hundred dollars a month are generally helping local businesses to rank within their zip code. So, in other words, it's small businesses. They need local SEO. They need to rank within their zip code. But generally speaking, you're not going to be able to do a national and international campaign for five hundred dollars a month. Those sorts of campaigns are going to run four or five or even six figures a month. And generally speaking, those are going to go to larger agencies, not solo consultants. They're going to go to teams. So this brings me to the second type of profile in the $500 a month SEO bucket. And that is what I call the first time outsourcer. Now, I see a lot of these in Facebook groups, they're in Reddit threads, they're in internet forums. And these people are really good at sales. They're really good at, at telling you what you want to hear. I, I've seen a few of these people at Chamber of Commerce events before. Now they have probably taken some sort of course or joined some sort of SEO membership they've had. Somebody teach them how to sell SEO really well. Now what they lack is the ability to do SEO in a way that's not going to get you Google penalized. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. And a lot of times they're relying on what we call private blog networks to build links, which are basically fake blogs, which will get you Google penalized if, if you're getting a big influx of links from this type of source. Now these people generally speaking they're good at making the sales and what they'll do is they'll go into the Facebook group and say like hey I got a SEO client does anybody here do white label SEO they want to offload all the actual SEO work to somebody else uh, this kind of crosses over into the third type of $500 SEO organization what I call the experienced outsourcer as I mentioned previously this is usually one or maybe two people at the most and they have a system of making sales and they'll sell 
SEO packages to local businesses at four or five hundred dollars a month. But what they're going to do is they're going to outsource it to a developing country, an organization there, or a freelancer there for ninety nine or a hundred and ninety nine dollars a month, and they're going to pocket the difference. Now, I hate to burst your bubble with how the sausage is made, but this is the vast majority, these last two categories are the vast majority of people selling SEO at $500 a month. In other words, it's the blind leading the blind. And the reason why so many small businesses fall victim to this is they don't really understand what goes into SEO. Now, SEO in its concept is very simple, but in its execution it's very difficult. SEO is not about playing tricks on Google or trying to fool it into thinking that you're better than you are. It's about actually making your website and your content and your product offerings and the sentiment around your brand the best that it can be. So that means good content on your site, a site that looks and performs and satisfies your customers as much as possible, getting links from authoritative websites, building up your brand in a way that, that most people are searching for it. This sounds really simple in a concept, but in practice it's really difficult to do all this because it does involve a little bit of work. It does involve work. It usually involves a lot of things in your code base, in your content, in your marketing, in your overall marketing. SEO is really becoming more and more about your overall marketing position. And someone who understands that or an agency that understands that is going to be a vital ally for you. But as I mentioned, a lot of people don't know how to analyze what they're even getting. A lot of people don't understand SEO. They throw money at situations and they hope for the best. They have no way of evaluating what they're getting. So this leads me into the next section, which is why do people think that SEO should only cost $500? There are as many ways to help people improve their SEO as there are musical styles or artistic styles. There's many different things that you can do to improve SEO. Now some people just do technical SEO. They improve your site speed they might change your URL structure. Some people are good at content. Some people focus primarily on building backlinks. Some people are good at design. Some people are good at integrated marketing and, and public relations strategy. There's all different ways to go about SEO. But people think that SEO costs $500 because it's an intangible product. It's esoteric. And what I mean by that is if you're building a house you know that you're gonna have to pay the workers you're gonna have to pay for the concrete the lumber the shingles the electricians the plumbers all those people have to come in and, and do their work you know that you have to buy the land underneath it you understand those concepts of those costs in the same way if you're getting a part or a product manufactured you understand that you have to pay for the metal, the rivets, the CNC machines at the manufacturing plant. You have to have people there doing quality assurance testing. You understand those types of costs, raw material, skilled labor. And I think what happens with a lot of digital marketing, if people can't, they can't see the tangible product, it's just coming out of code and content work that you're doing online I think it's less tangible to people and also what people see are a lot of mixed messages because they don't know how to evaluate SEO they don't know how to evaluate marketing except if the phone rings or it doesn't ring and they see a lot of Google ads out there for people who are selling SEO for $99 a month or $199 a month or $299 a month or they see GoDaddy selling a service like Get Found for $19.99 a month. And they think that this is what SEO should cost all the way around the board. 
but the ugly reality is is what you get for a 99 or 199 dollars is people <laughs> that are building up spammy backlinks on spammy sites remember I mentioned before private blog networks this is a thing that Google started penalizing very heavily about four years ago and if your SEO company is building links using that method using methods that were working in 1999 but they're not working in 2019 then eventually you're either going to see your rankings whatever ranking improvement that you had it's going to disappear or you might even get a manual penalty from Google the worst case scenario your site gets de-indexed completely these are the things that can happen when you try and cut corners with marketing and you're not following best practices white hat uh, type of things so without a way to compare quality in a tangible way people try to minimize risk and so they go with an SEO company that only costs $199 a month as opposed to $19.99 a month meaning like <laughs> $200 versus $2,000 they're gonna minimize risk but the problem is is with digital marketing it's just like anything else you get what you pay for if you're paying next to nothing you're gonna get next to nothing and in fact in a lot of cases you might end up in a worse position than if you had simply done nothing at all because a lot of these practices that people employ they're out of date they're things that Google actively penalizes sites for and it's a lot of bad information the quality of material that, that you put into stuff is the same with a digital product or digital marketing as if you were making a product in the real world this brings me to another thing that I want to talk about which is the cost of doing business as a SEO agency now I think a lot of people misunderstand this and I can say with certainty that even other people who have had careers building websites don't understand this fully a simple way to, to describe it is there's a cost of materials that goes into running an SEO agency or a web design agency or any type of marketing endeavor like that this is my full-time job this isn't a side gig this isn't a side hustle I don't do this from my mom's basement this is my full-time living that supports me and my family and there's tools that I need to monitor the progress of SEO to find out valuable information about you and your competitors if you're a client of mine I'll run down the list I think uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna show some screenshots here in the video I don't have it in front of me right now but I think most of the tools that are out there for monitoring SEO for finding out what's going on with your site for looking at your competitors and evaluating them whether it's Moz Pro whether it's Majestic, SEMrush, or Ahrefs, all these cost somewhere between $199 and $399 a month for someone who has a client roster that I do. If you have a small client roster, say if you have one person, you might be able to get by with spending $200 a month. But if you have any number of clients on your roster, you're going to have to spend at least four or five hundred dollars a month just to have some basic tools to do your job so that's reason number one there's the cost of doing business with just the tools now if you're running a SEO agency uh, like a larger agency and you're renting commercial space and you're paying employee salaries and you're not just hiring freelancers then those costs are gonna go up having talent on your team is is what you're paying for those overheads are gonna be larger but there's more oversight there's more people there's more resources generally speaking the more that you pay for the more resources you get if you're an SEO consultant who's just starting this you're you know a freelancer or you're a, a one or two person shop and you're trying to stretch out into this it's very important that you charge enough to be profitable giving your work away for free it's it's not gonna do you any favors it's gonna devalue your work and you're gonna take a loss for all those months that you're doing it so if I was to let's just say that I was going into business doing SEO 
brand new. Having a tool like Ahrefs or SEMrush, which uh, those are the two that, that I think are probably the best overall tools. Those are going to set you back anywhere from 200 to 400 a month just starting off. So it's very important to actually turn a profit. And I think most business owners, when you put it to them in those sorts of terms, they're going to understand that a little bit better. But again, there's a lot of companies out there that are completely outsourced. When it comes to the actual oversight of the work, you want to make sure that people are doing things that are not cutting corners, that are not going to end up penalizing your SEO or tanking your rankings later. And again, it's about risk mitigation. And this brings me to another point. I think there's a psychology that people if we don't understand what we're purchasing, we want to mitigate risk, and I totally understand that. If you don't know what you're buying, then you want to waste as little money on it as possible. So if you've never bought SEO before, if you've never done digital marketing, what I would encourage you to do is research. You should read as much information as possible so at least you have a sense of whether you're getting something good or bad. With any SEO agency, don't let them use too much jargon. Have people explain what their process is. Have them explain exactly what you're getting. But before you spend any money on digital marketing, at least understand what you're getting. You know, Do some research on it so you can evaluate whether you're getting ripped off or not. I think with larger organizations, they are more prone to go with a, a larger web agency or a larger SEO agency, digital marketing agency. They want to mitigate risk by not spending a small amount. They want to spend an amount that's congruent with the rest of their investments. If you're a large organization, you want to mitigate risk by spending enough to make sure that there's going to be people handling it, there's going to be oversight, there's going to be checks and balances that make sure that the work is getting done correctly. And I think it's more the, the smaller businesses where they're more prone to spend less on it because if you don't understand it, the way to mitigate risk is to spend less. I totally get that. And I, I see cases where I've had prospects tell me that, where people have said that they're going to go with the cheaper option. And then I, I track what their SEO agency is actually doing. And every single time, and I mean every single time that, I, that I've seen this happen, they're building spammy links on the private blog networks like I mentioned. The rankings actually don't go up. Nothing happens. And those businesses really would have been better off just either doing nothing or taking their money and lighting it on fire. And I hate to say that, but it's true. You have to do a little research on what you're getting. I'm not saying that everybody who charges $500 or less is bad. Now, far from it. There are a lot of people that I know that will do a good job. They're not going to get you, you know, Google penalized. They're going to do things to improve you. But generally speaking, there are people who are doing local SEO and not national SEO. Those companies are more like maybe 5% of, of the SEO agencies at the low end. And I want to leave you with this. I would rather compete on being the best than competing on price. I'd rather be the best than be the cheapest. If you are trying to compete by being the cheapest, you're in a race to the bottom and you're always going to lose. And if you're competing on being the absolute cheapest, then that's the only thing you have to compete on. But I think at the end of the day, we're all trying to improve our businesses in the best way that we know how. And I hope all this makes sense to you. And I hope I'm not coming off as derogatory toward you know anybody that's, that's selling SEO for less. Just because you sell SEO for less doesn't mean that you're a bad person uh, or you're scamming people. But I do know <laughs> a lot of people that, that are. It is an industry that's filled with a lot of snake oil. And again, it's, it's people preying on business owners' fear. It's people preying on the fact that a lot of people don't understand SEO. They don't understand how Google works. But Google is really just trying to find the best result for people. That's it.
they're trying to deliver the best result for your customers. There is no shortcut to it. There's no magic bag of, of SEO dust that I reach into and I shake the SEO fairy dust over a website and it starts to rocket to number one. It's not like that at all. It usually involves a lot of work improving their site, improving their brand, improving their authority, and making their site have a great experience for their customers. Those are all the things that go into SEO. You always have room to improve your site and your brand. Hopefully all that makes sense. My name's John Locke. My business is Lockdown Design and SEO. If you have an SEO question that you'd like to see us answer, please leave it in the comments below. We'll answer it out in a future video for you. Thanks again for tuning in, and until next time, peace.